as a breakfast and plus TV Africa thank you for joining us uh, once again it's time for off the press and as always we will take you through the pages of a dailies that's been made available this morning by a paper vendor and uh, all things being equal would have Ezekiel Nyai who was a public affairs analyst joined the conversation but I'd like to start off with the leadership newspaper this morning and the banner caption uh, talks about the Kaduna train attack eight bodies recovered 26 injured survivors narrate ordeal is boldly written on the front page of the leadership now above it uh, you have the nas transmit constitution amendment bill to state assemblies above uh, the bold caption of uh, the leadership newspaper nas transmit constitution amendment bills to state assemblies so Ludo unveils 20 commissioners designate. Governors showcase state's potential at Dubai Investment Summit. Uh, it's very interesting. Wondering what we hope to achieve with that. Fans on rampage after Ghana dash Nigeria's hope of World Cup. And that's also on the leadership this morning. And just before we move away, federal government freezes over 30 accounts of illegal loan companies. Convention, APC has disappointed naysayers. This is what Ahmed Lawan is quoted to say. At last, Kwankwaso dumps the PDP for NNPP. These are the headlines on the leadership newspaper. Moving away from the leadership to the punch newspaper, the main story this morning is uh, the Kaduna Abuja train attack. Buhari National Assembly governors demand tough actions. Survivors uh, recount ordeal. Uh, with uh, three riders, their outrage uh, greet uh, killings of doctor, unionists, government officials in Kaduna bound uh, train attack. Airlines hold flights to Kaduna over attacks. Reps summon NSA service chiefs and the IGP. I felt my soul leaving my body. Recount survivor who saw another passenger shot. Uh, those are all the writers on that particular story on the Kaduna Abuja train attack. Above the masthead, uh, Nikon uh, bars undercapitalized insurers from new businesses, others claims settlements. That's on the front page, uh, just above the masthead of the Punch newspaper. Uh, below that, poor Nigerians to heat 95.1 million in 2022. That's according to the World Bank. Customs hand over 3.9 billion Naira drones, camouflage others to army. State assemblies receive 44 bills on constitution amendment. Or a police salary increment reps summon minister, accountant general, others. Cargo importation, clearing agents plan fresh strike, demand duty. Review, other stories on the punch. OAU students murder Falano, six uh, fiat to prosecute hotelier, others. Three Quara killer kidnappers shot dead, weapons, chums recovered. Presidency, I won't bow to APC's intimidation, the Claire's wiki. Those are the stories you can find on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Away from the Punch newspaper, we take a look at the Daily Independent Abuja Kaduna train attack. Workers' union blames railway management. Workers' Union blames railway management for the Abuja Kaduna attack. And you also find eight bodies recovered, 26 persons injured, and several abducted. Senate asks Buhari to declare full scale war against bandits. Should we call them bandits? Are they still called bandits or terrorists? Once military uh, to bombard terrorist enclaves to restore peace. Attack victims recount harrowing experience and like Nigerians, I am deeply pained. That's what the president is quoted to say. These are the riders underneath the bold caption. PDP zoning committee meeting deadlock. Buhari insists 2021 Finance Act empowers FIRS to collect VAT. 
UBEC 6 review of consolidated revenue from 2% to 4% says 50% of schools in Nigeria lack furniture and pupils sit on floor. 2023 presidency, we're not ganging up against a tickle. PDP governors and Saraki uh, is quoted on that. These uh, you find on... Uh, the page of the Daily Independent, and just before we move away, Africa needs investment opportunities more than ever. Uh, Lumilu is quoted on that as he received the Time uh, 100 Impact Award. Custom intercept drones, military uniforms, others at Lagos Airport. Again, gunmen attack train in station or train station in Kaduna. These are the headlines on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. All right, the last paper we are reviewing this morning uh, is the Nation newspaper. All of the papers this morning, the Ido carried and the Kaduna uh, train attack as expected. Uh, the Nation captioned this this way, eight dead, 41 injured, many still missing in train attack. Tinubu, I can't celebrate when people are mourning victims of train crash. Or clash there. Okay. Uh, 44 constitution review bills for houses of assembly that's above the masthead of the nation are just beside it. Uh, PDP zone in battle shifts to uh, at home committee. All right. Uh, aspirant engage proxies. Why Nigeria deserves a national career by Serica, that's uh, the Minister of Aviation there. Wobbling Eagles fail to peak World Cup ticket. All right, uh, more stories on the nation newspaper. Nigeria losing uh, $14 billion annually to a farmer. Heard a clashes, says Oshibajo, that's um, the vice president. Uh, those are the stories, really. Okay, there's one more we could just take before we just wrap this all up. A fire shades uh, associates join UNIS SDP. Kwam Kwaso dumps the People's Democratic Party. Those are the major stories on the Nation newspaper this morning. We do have Ezekiel Yaito, who is a public affairs analyst. He joins the conversation this morning. It's good to have you join us, Ezekiel Yaito. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I hope I'm on me. Okay, good. Thanks for having me. All right. Ezekiel, we'll start off, uh, you know, the papers, uh, the review of the papers this morning with a story that talks about your friend. I mean, you talk about him all the time. Kwankoso dumps the PDP for NNPP. Uh, just a few more days before the 2023 election. Let, let me tell Nigerians for free that... Um, the dynamics of 2023 is not going to be like people think. And that man is a politician. He knows what he's doing. He understands very well what he's doing. And what he's done is not at all an accident or a coincidence. You see, the game of politics, we need to understand how it is done. He knew and told me personally, he told me that if he went for primaries against Tambual, he will lose. If he went for primaries against Haraki, he would lose. If he went for primaries against any of these people, he will lose. But that all of them combined cannot beat him in a general election. But that PDP has a certain mentality, a certain arrogance where they don't look at people's strengths. They play to their interest. And in politics, you must understand that you have to go to the people somewhere along the line. So get a man that will win for you and not your friend that will lose. And that is his thinking. And he did all the calculations and everything. That man today is the most popular person across northern Nigeria. Anybody that gets him as president or vice president is sure to have a good chunk. If he's a presidential candidate and he goes with a, a, a southern person that is generally acceptable they win because he's got the vote he's got the liking of the people he left office for so many years and yet he kept in touch last year he sponsored 370 north uh, northern students not even northern students nigerians 
for a master's degree program as an individual. On my birthday, he actually came to Uyo, and during the meeting, he said he's promising four scholarships to a Kwaibom student from beginning to the end. He just does this and has taken education as if his life depends on it. And it's very rare for the North that we think, oh, the North, uh, they are not interested in education. It's not true, okay? He has decided to make Kano, and from Kano, the, the, you know, the, the Kwankwasia movement and everything, they've moved from Kano to cover the whole of the northern part, and his main instrument against popular opinion that people think is education. During education, all these thousands of people, that of young people that he has empowered, sent to school, they all, wherever they are in the world, they all come down to Nigeria and to their villages and mobilize their people. So this guy is just a walking, you know, uh, what they call dynamite. He's exploding everywhere. Now, with that, wisdom says, look, if you stay in PDP, they'll just rubbish you. Stand out and show them that you are not a fluke. And this man stepped out, created NNPP, and within 24 hours, let me, let me exaggerate it, within a week, he had full structure in every ward in the northern part of Nigeria and a good part of the southern part of Nigeria, including Akwaibom State. Now, that is what is called political capacity. That is, in my opinion, what I call phase one. There's going to be a phase two. He can be a president and a vice president. There's going to be an alliance somewhere along the line. And I can tell you for free, and I'm very happy that Mr. President signed the Electoral Act because it's just an act of God, the goodwill of people who have been praying, and I will give the president the credit, I said so, for whatever reason, you know, you know, they, they, like the Bible says, the Son of Man will need be crucified, but what to whom through which it come? So the converse is, is the same. Nigerians will be rescued, and God bless that man that will be used. And the president has allowed himself, in spite of all problems, to sign that electoral act, which means that your vote will count. And people will be shocked. All this, you know, each time the mainstream media do analysis and talk of APC, PDP, APC, PDP, I just think that they are so politically naive with all due respect. It's not, it's not a, look, okay, Kwan Kwasu has just stepped out. One day, an NNPP, an unknown party, has become the song on every lip in, on the, in the North. And very soon, big people following this, you know, the, the APC crisis and everything and the PDP, they are joining him. So that guy is going to become a big party overnight. Party is not name. It's the people. If a man like Bola Ahmed Tinubu decides to join any party, no matter the party, even if there was no name before, overnight, that party becomes a big party. Imagine a possible alliance. A relationship, working relationship between Kwan Kwaso and a man like Tinubu, networking with what we call the third force within the ADC uh, conclave to give Nigeria what they call national rescue team, government of national unity. You know, the NNPP coming down to network with ADC, and probably if uh, APC succeeds in pushing Tinubu out and he get involved in either his party, um, that's NNPP or ADC, or even a, a, a different party. And then these three come together. Where, who is PDP? Who is APC? So when we do our political analysis, let us be not stuck in the past and be able to know that. And this was what destroyed PDP. They said, we, oh, you cannot remove an incumbent. We've been here, or we'll be here for the next 60 years. Listen to the arrogance. Today, APC is sure oh, we will. Have you asked Nigerians what their real concerns are? Have you seen the anger in the land? Are you living in your cocoon and them so detached from the realities of life that people are very unhappy? What will make people to vote for you as PDP? What will make people to vote for you as APC? Performance or the people being taken for granted? So I salute the courage and the political dexterity and deftness 
of uh, my friend and brother Alaji Kwankwaso. All right, Mr. Nyaid Hoka, let's uh, leave on Kwankwaso uh, for a bit. You know, uh, all the papers this morning, you know, are leading with the gruesome um, um, issues uh, in Kaduna State uh, with different and captions, uh, you know, put differently. You know, I really want to get your candid opinion. Uh, the, the punch, the way it captioned its own story this morning, Buhari National Assembly governors demand tough actions. Survivors uh, recount um, ordeal. Why are we demanding tough actions? It's not as though it's some uh, emergent situation uh, in that particular state, you know, the train attack had happened sometime last year. You know, Kaduna Abuja Highway, you know, is notorious for attacks by bandits and all of that. What kind of tough actions are we actually demanding right now? Why are we so reactionary, Mr. Nyaito? I'll tell you two things. I've said this so many times that I start to sound like a broken gong. Nigerians need to wake up and draw a line between governance and politics. Nigerians need to wake up and draw a line between governance and politics. Politics is a door that leads to a room called government. In that room, the people that are inside that room called government, they are the administrators of our common patrimony. They are the policy makers that shape our life while the door is a recruitment center the room is a do or die the room is contained by people who will either let us live or get us to die so we must be so careful the people that we, it's like there is a nuclear button inside the room so you must be careful to set, send in sane people inside that room. If not so, one, one, one irrational person will just press that nu nuclear uh, button and then explode the whole world. That is why Nigeria has become the poverty capital of the world, because we send in people that have no understanding of what government is outside of state capture, outside of themselves, outside of that, they are, they are very mild, you know, myopic, you know, you know, mindset. We send such people there and we expect a good result. It's not going to happen. It's not possible. That room called government is the next most powerful room after God. That's why you can't take the risk of just sending anybody there. He's my friend. He's my supporter. He's been with me. He's my loyalist. You send them to the room where you have the nuclear button of this country. It shouldn't be. Now, why am I saying all this? Look at Kaduna. How can a government for four years not know that it does not take rocket science for these terrorists to face that rail line and in fact they should they, they they could even bomb the rail lines you know so that the train does not move how can you abandon the road and concentrate on the rail to go to kaduna for seven years what is the distance between abuja and kaduna what does it take for you to deploy drones and get into a satellite tracking so that if anything happens you can play back to the scene and trace it and track it back. This is modern technology. Well, but the minister, but, but, uh, Ezekiel Yaitok, I mean, the, the minister yes. yesterday, um, while he visited uh, uh, one of the train stations, talked about the fact that they had made their request, they had talked about it and made requests, and, uh, but the request wasn't granted because we're talking about having digital surveillance camera. And so... Um, Maybe we don't have money. Maybe we don't have money, but we have money to buy Tucano jets. You see, we have we have this this state capture uh, uh, entrepreneurs in government. I said it the day they talk about Tucano jets, Tucano jets. Nigerians in government think of contract. They think of contract. I had said that if they had given a think tank. I would be so glad to be part of that think tank. 
one tenth of that money. What will go into is take the wind off the sail. Do you understand me? Take the oxygen off the flame. What is the wind? What is the oxygen of this terrorist? It is unemployed youths who get into their enclave, not because they love it, but because that's a way. Can you imagine you turning the northern state to a construction site? You get a lot of the young people involved. They get to do so much and they make money and they are living every day because of personal interest. They don't want any problem to come and anybody to come and disturb their, their problem. Like I, I told people, I said that one of the most lazy and intellectually uh, ingenious things to do as a governor is to have 10,000 aides, 1,000 SSPAs, where you pay them money for doing nothing. Nyaito will never do that. I rather, so, let me give you a very little illustration because we need to start to think. If you pay a guy 250,000 naira a month, doing nothing. In a year, you've paid him three million. In, 12, in, in four years, you've paid him 12 million. He lives large, buys a good car, lives in a good house. After four years, he has nothing. But if you carry just two million and train that guy in a trade and give it to him as a non-interest yielding loan, in four years, that guy has repaid your money and turned your two million into an enterprise where he is the CEO and his life is made. Compare the two people. In the first person, you spend 12 million, you achieve nothing. In the second place, Nyaito spends 2 million, recovers the 2 million, gets entrepreneurs who is employing people, creates jobs. My brother, what is so difficult to think in this? Because we get people into government who are not thinking in terms of service and creating wealth and stability, but in terms of contract, so that they can have enough money to run the next election. Nigerians should wake up. I don't blame these people, you know. Okay. Nigerians should wake up and think. All right, um, quickly, uh, let's look at the leadership newspaper here. It talks about uh, the rampage that happened yesterday, uh, shortly after uh, Ghana dashed Nigerians hope of the World Cup. And that's, you know, below the, uh, the corner of the leadership newspaper. It feels like history repeated itself again yesterday. 1973, at a time where Ghana had an encounter with, Lig in, uh, with Nigerians in Lagos, uh, you know, the, the Ghanaian boss set ablaze. And uh, some people yesterday said that this was beyond just losing a game, but it was the people... Uh, pouring out their frustration of all of the disappointment and everything that's going on in the country. Uh, how do you react to this? I, I, I at, this, at the risk of sounding unsympathetic, I think that it's a blessing in disguise. Nigerians need to be angered, irritated, frustrated to a point where they sit down and think that that reaction of burning these going to rampage no 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 is not it you are spiting you are smiting your nose to spite your face you don't need to burn any boss that boss will be the one that will carry you tomorrow if you burn it you lose both ways there's a friend of mine that used to say something that his father told him he said no take vets leave food take vets chop the food you understand me I, I found it very interesting. No take an angry, blah, blah, you leave. No, the anger, use and chop the food because you need the energy of that food for you to be able to move on with your life. What am I saying? Nigerians need to be angry enough to sit down and think. I, I, angry enough the... to be violent? No, that's what I just said. No, violence is not even an option. Violence is spite, you know, smiting your nose to spite your face. The boss that you burned down is the boss that you will need to carry you tomorrow. That, that was in 1973. Are the things that you will need. Maybe the business oh, yes. of an innocent person who has been struggling. No, violence is not an option. It's to sit down and think. Nigerians should get so angry. We should be pressed to the wall so much so that in 2023, we no longer think in terms of 500 naira, 1,000 naira. We sit down and say, guy, we want a proper manager to come and manage our affairs. If we had proper management team, we would not be having ad hoc approach to, to games. World Cup does not come overnight. It takes time to come. 
and you build your team. You give the people their due. You let the people know that it's like in my team. I'm running for governorship. My team, we don't spray, we don't spray money. We have a vision. We have a story, and everybody coming is coming in as people who are contributing to get a better future for themselves. If you need money, I can give you the term of the people to go. People are discovering that I don't need to be given fish. I need to be taught how to fish because the fish they gave me last night is finished and I'm hungry again. But the guy that had learned how to fish is continuing to eat and feed his family. That, that story is starting to resonate. I don't go for cheap solutions. I go for sustainable and lasting solutions. And Nigerians are waking up. Imagine having a political meeting where you don't pay anybody a dime. The place is full. They switch off their phones and they sit down for four hours to listen to you. It's never happened. But it's happening today. People need to be angry enough to think again. People are saying, forget those rallies. Forget to start to have town hall meetings. Start to talk to us. Don't have these rallies where you bring 500 people from where you are coming from. The same 500 team is where you are carrying around. Let me end on this. I, I, made, I, I made a call to a billboard that I wanted to put up. And that guy told me that the cost of that billboard for 30 days is 400000 and that there's another one that is close to a million for 30 days. And yet this was splashing all these things all over. People should start asking questions. All that money, where is it coming from? All that convoy of so many cars and we know how they are fueled, where is the money coming from? The money that you are enjoying today, the clap that you are clapping today, is the misery and the poverty that is waiting for you tomorrow. Nigeria, Nigerians have to wake up to start to think. All right, Mr. Ajok, I just uh, saw another disturbing um, story uh, on the Punch uh, newspaper. Uh, it is attributed to the World Bank. It says, uh, poor Nigerians to heat 95.1 million, not in five years, not in 10 years, but in 2022. The World Bank is saying that this is coming at a time when the federal government has tried to explain some of the issues we are having in the country in terms of uh, why cooking gas prices are high. They are saying that it is not just uh, limited to Nigeria alone, it is a global issue. But my question uh, right now is the fact that uh, poor Nigerians are increasing and this year it is projected to hit 95.1 million. Now, let me tell you, you know, the, it, 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 it's an effect that you feel with time. It's like you have an accident and something, you know, gives way. It's at night that the full weight of that pain dawns on you. This 2022, the projection, it will be worse in 2023. Nigerians need to know that. And because, you see, we are borrowing. When you borrow, you borrow on ISPO a lot of times, especially with the state government. If you have a smart governor, he will know how to reschedule the debt. But you know that there are certain reschedulings that cannot be rescheduled again, except on what you may call non um, uh, uh, what's the word uh, on, on a basis that is not um, you know, non concessional basis? When you go and study, like I did, the debt profile of your state, you will know that bringing people who are Jamboreans into government is the worst thing that can happen to you. You need to bring in governors that will not stay in government house, that will drive their own cars that will not have aids and security all over. The paraphernalia of office must be stripped to barest minimum. That will not have private jets. That will shut down all the you know, uh, offices that they have outside the, their state. How can I be an Aquaibom person and I have a liaison office in Lagos? I'm a governor. Then I have a liaison office in a, in a, in a I can even understand Abuja, which is in the first case, is not necessary. You have a liaison office in Lagos. Somebody, an investor, comes to you. He cannot come to your state where you have airport, first class, you have first class hotels, and you have first class road, first class infrastructure. Somebody gets to Lagos, he cannot come to your state. He wants you to receive him in Lagos. Even also, he will go. He should go. He never thought of investing in your place in the first instance. 
and then you are investing. So you have to have a, a in every state, not a quite bomb. You have to have governors who are thinking differently. And because they are thinking, that is a Greek adage that says, you start learning death from sleep. It's from the campaign that you know whether this man knows the problem we are, we are facing. They're splashing money all around. What do you think is the mentality of that person? We need to come to realize that we have problems. We have problems. And that chapter 2, section 14, subsection 2B of the Constitution, that is what you should ask everybody first. Please, what is chapter 2, section 14, what subsection 2B? If the person says, what is that? Just, don't, just, just mark X across that person. Because that is the, 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 the matching order of government. The security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. It's not you. It's not your comfort. It's not your friends. I want to ask you as a governor, what percentage of your budget is resident in your state? And what percentage is capital? Uh, Ezekiel, and yeah, I took just as we coasted down quickly because we were being prompted to uh, just move away. And this is under Daily Independent. Uh, the Workers' Union blamed railway management for the attacks. What are your thoughts on that? And yesterday we had, uh, you know, the president of uh, the Workers' Union, uh, Innocent yeah. GJ. He said that constantly they have talked about this issue. They raised some concern. They were even even threatened to embark on a strike action, but uh, all of that didn't fall on an ear that's listening. No, let me tell you something like. about the railway. Go and look at the contract. That contract, to the best of my knowledge i hope i'm wrong but i think from what i've done it's um it's like a ppp and the people need to make money and recoup their investment the more unsafe our roads are the more people are pushed to the rail lines the more people are pushed to the rail lines the more money the administrators of the rail concession will make the more you play to the gallery and impress them, the more you move your whole wrist to one lane. And that lane, you can do it if you are a government that thinks ahead. That lane, you let everybody know that the tracking of that lane from the beginning to the end is fully covered by satellite tracking and that anybody that crosses the lane at any time of day, we can track you back so many kilometers where you came from. You see, security is not the physical. Security is first and foremost the mindset. That is where you win the security battle. So either the managers of the rail were too eager to make the concessionaires happy by playing to their whims and caprices, and forgetting that their sole responsibility is to the people, or they should come and show us evidence that they had made these memos. They should find a way of leaking it. Right. That they had made memos available to the management, to government, and that's how far they can go. They can only recommend. And that the management, the government, could not help them in either their budgeting or okay. implementing the ideas they put forward. If they put this forward, we will be able to forgive them. If they cannot show evidence, then we'll hold them as being complicit. That's one conspiracy theory. Thank you so much, Ezekiel. Yeah, I took, uh, we have to let you go at this point. We we'll appreciate your thoughts always on The Breakfast. Do have a fantastic day. Thank you so much. And my love and my prayers to all Nigerians. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nya Etok. It is not the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Away from all of the press, we'll be going down uh, what happened this day in history. And after that, we'll come back and have our first conversation. Kaduna is in the news, and we will be talking much about that in a moment. Stay with us.